Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this video is sponsored by Lee and Lee so that I can show you how to set up and install the rotational shift power supply units in your case. I'm going to talk you through all the different wiring of everything you need to connect up and the important parts of how this installs in your case and the logic for it. I'm also going to show you how to connect all the cables, how to tidy them up, how to make them look nice and neat. I'll show you inside and outside the PC build so you can get an idea of how they connect up. I'm going to show you for the different types of graphics card, what sort of cables you'll need, whether it's 12 volt 2x6 connector like this one or a standard 8 pin PCIe power connector. I'm going to talk you through all the things you need to know there. I'm also going to show you how to use the USB hub that comes included in the box and talk about how to connect that up. And this is definitely a highlight of the power supply unit because it allows you to connect up multiple USB devices in your system really easily. All these things and more will be timestamped down below so you can jump to the relevant points in the video, skip things you don't need, or just find your way around really easily. Now I'm using the RS 1200G, which is the 1200 watt version of this power supply unit. For reference, I'm going to show you all these cables that you can see here. But as you'll see, when you get everything out of the box, there's a lot going on. So I want to talk to you about all these different things, what you need to use them for and how they work, including the little highlights like these, these magnetic cable clips that you can see here. These are useful for tidying the cables up in your case, assuming you're building in a metal case that can be very handy for the EPS power cables. You then have these additional cable combs, which you can use on your 24 pin power cable and the GPU power cable to neaten things up. You've got some little dust covers that go on ports that you're not using, as well as these covers which screw onto the sides of the power supply unit, blocking the holes so nothing's exposed in the power supply depending on how you've mounted it. It's worth planning the mounting of the power supply unit before you go installing it. So you can see here I'm mounting it in a dual chamber case and I'm putting it in so that the connectors will be on the left hand side, which would be a pretty standard setup. In order to do that, you have to rotate the mains power plug to the back so it would then install that way. But you can have it the other way around, as you can see, so that those main connectors are going towards the top of the case. This will be useful depending on where the power supply positions in your build and how the cables are installed and how things are tidy. So you have a choice, whether it's sideways on like this or straight up towards the top of the case. And this can be very useful from build to build, depending on how you're doing it. I'm going to show you how to install them in the standard position and then wire everything in nicely. I'm going to start with the 24 pin power connectors and the two 8 pin EPS power connectors for the motherboard. So you can be sure that your motherboard's properly powered and the system will power on. So the 24 pin power connector is the most important here. And you'll see that this has connectors on one end that are split into two parts and then one larger end that will plug into the motherboard directly. So you want these two connectors on the left hand side here. Those are the ones that are going to plug into the power supply unit. So you have a choice here and that's important to know beforehand. You'll see it's marked 24 pin ATX on one side, for example. These connectors are also on the other side of the power supply unit. So it's going to depend on where you plan on installing the power supply as I've shown in its rotational nature. But you plug those two connectors in here, making sure they're firmly pushed all the way in and clipped into place. And those connectors will then be running to the motherboard itself. They'd go on this bottom side if you're planning on having the main connectors facing up towards the top of the case. But if you wanted to have your connectors facing inwards to the left, as I showed a minute ago, you'd first flip that rotational mains power supply to the right so it sticks out the back. And then you'd plug the 24 pin power connectors into the top instead. So on the side with all the holes up here, you plug those cables in. Don't forget though that you might well want to put those plates in place over the top of these and screw those into place to block the holes. And I'll talk more about that in a little while. But the connectors will go in there and then the other end plugs into the right hand side of your motherboard. This is the same no matter what motherboard you're using. The 24 pin power connectors on that right hand side at the top but you'll see that it has a little plastic notch on one side of it. And that's how the cable clips over it and hooks into place there. So from a couple of different angles, you can see how that works. Just make sure that's pushed in and firmly seated there. Now you have these cable combs that I mentioned earlier. You can use these combs to put them onto the cables if you want to make them even tidier. So you have to basically work each individual cable into this, trying to copy the one that's already on the 24 pin power connector. And you'll find that you can then repeat this process and it is fiddly and it does take some time, but it will allow you to neaten the cable up. You then put a clip over the other side of that to hold it all in place once it's done. 
And then when it's in the case, you can then slide those cable combs around, tidying up the cables and neatening things up. So it is worth taking the time to do that. Then there's the two 8-pin CPU power connectors. You'll see they're marked PSU on one end and CPU on the other end. It's the PSU end that you want to plug into the power supply unit and then the CPU end goes into the motherboard. These are actually two slightly different cables and I'll show you why in a second. And that can be handy depending on your motherboard. But they'll plug into the ports marked CPU and PCIe down the bottom here. And you can plug them in down there making sure that they're fully seated and firmly pushed into place. Now you might need two of these. Most modern ATX motherboards need two. Some only need one. Some might need one eight pin and one four pin. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But you plug both those cables in there and then you have these two connectors which would need to run to the top left. Now obviously I'm doing this outside the case so you can see it nice and clearly, but you'd wait until you're actually fully installed with your motherboard in the case and run the cables through and plug them in there. They hook over the ports and there's a little notch on there that the plastic clip hooks over and then you can't pull it back out again. Well, you should hear a click as you insert it into the slot when it's plugged in. Some motherboards instead require one four pin and one eight pin. You'll see this one, for example, has that set up there in the top left. And the way you do this is you take one of the cables and you'll see that it can be split apart. Notice the design slightly different. You slide them apart like that and then you've got two four pin connectors. One of those plugs into the motherboard and the other one will just be put loose in the case somewhere. And that's how you'd sort that out. Now for the graphics card powering, obviously this is going to be different depending on your GPU, but here you'll see there are four 8-pin PCIe power connectors. So first of all, we're going to start with an NVIDIA GPU. This is actually an older 3090, but you're going to need a couple of power cables for this. You'll see it has two 8-pin power connectors on it. This will be the same for Intel GPUs and for AMD graphics cards as well. So Radeon GPUs will probably require an 8-pin PCIe power connector. So what you want to do is to plug the end marked PSU into the PCIe ports up here. You'll see it's got PSU clearly marked on it. And again, you want to make sure it's pushed all the way in, firmly seated, clicked into place there nicely. We need two cables, so we'll plug in two of those cables into that. And then the other end would plug into the graphics card once it's actually installed in your case. But I want to show you it here so it's really visible and easy to see. What you need to do is to pinch the two ends together, so the six pin and the two pin part of them. Slot them together, you'll notice there's a little plastic notch along the edge of them that you have to sort of line up there. And this can be a little fiddly to do but you'll need to make sure both parts of the cable are fully inserted otherwise the gpu might not be getting enough power and it could underperform as a result so just make sure with both parts of those cables it's sorted out and plugged in now if you've got another gpu like the radian 9070 xt that i have here that might have three connectors on it so you can see this requires three 8-pin PCIe power connectors instead of just two. That's fine. This high wattage power supply unit includes enough cables to do this. So we have two additional cables here. It's worth noting that one of these is a pigtail cable. So you'll see on one end that has two connectors and those can be used, but I'd recommend sticking to the single connectors if you can. So just use three of those. Now, alternatively, these can also be used for other things. So PCIe power connectors might be required for Li and Li's fan controllers, for example. So if you need that, you obviously have a spare one there as well. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, like a 50 series or a 40 series graphics card, then you'll want to instead use this cable, which is the 12 volt 2x6 connector. So this cable enables you to plug directly from the power supply unit into the graphics card and you don't need the adapter that comes with your GPU. You can use this cable instead. As you can see, it can handle up to 600 watts and it also has little blue pins on it so that you can see when it's fully inserted and you can make sure it's fully inserted to both the power supply unit and the graphics card. And the cable is the same on both ends, so it doesn't really matter which way around you plug it in. And it does have cable combs, as you can spy on there as well. But you're basically pushing that all the way in on both ends, making sure it's fully seated and that it's not taut or pulled in a random direction that will put pressure on it. But with the additional cable combs that are included in the box, you can put these on there as well. So if you want to neaten this cable up, you can do it. Just like with the 24 pin power connector, I'd recommend essentially copying the one that's already on there, trying to run the individual cables into the combs and try and slot those in. It is very fiddly. It does take time. If you're clumsy like me, it'll be awkward and 
annoying, but it is worth doing because it does help to tidy those cables up and neaten things up more, especially if some of that cable is more visible around the front than you'd like. And you can also then put the back on the cable as well so it just stays in place there and the cables don't come out of the comb as you put it in and then just connect the up so it's sorted out. And then you've got more than one cable comb on there because it only comes with one as standard and you can run it up and down the cable to neaten things up once it's all connected up and installed in place. I'm happy to report this cable is nice and lengthy, so it's running from the top back of this case to the bottom, and as you can see, there's still plenty of length there, so it's not under tension, which is great. Now, you also have this USB hub included with the power supply unit. This is useful if you need to connect multiple USB devices to your system, like Lee and Lee's fan controllers, for example. Now this can be used in a couple of different ways. You'll see that it has four ports on it that you can plug USB connectors into. And on one end, there's a little cover at the back that you can slide off. It will then clip into place here on the power supply unit. And then it is powered directly from the power supply unit when it's in this mode. This means that this powered hub should then support any USB device you plug into it once it's connected to the motherboard. Alternatively, if you'd rather have it somewhere else in your case, you can use the SATA power connector on the end here. This is the same cable you use for hard drives and SSDs, and I'll show you more about that in a minute as a reminder of timestamp so you can jump to those points. But you've got multiple different SATA cables available in the box. So there are three included, which you can choose which to use, but essentially you're just plugging it in to the SATA ports on the power supply unit and then plugging the other end into the USB hub. This white cable that I've plugged into the black motherboard signal port on the hub will then plug into the USB port on the bottom middle of your motherboard. Now you usually find there are two of those, but sometimes there's only one. And if you have multiple different devices that you're trying to connect up, this can be very handy because you can see we've now got four cables potentially that we can plug into there. So as an example, we've got two lots of Lee and Lee fans here that require two different controllers, and they're going to plug it into the white connectors on the USB hub. This will also work for all-in-one coolers or other things that require this RGB strips that have controllers that require USB connection. You might find you have multiple different devices that require this but essentially you're plugging those cables into there and then the motherboard signal cable from that other end, from the black connector, from that into the motherboard itself. This is a great additional thing that comes with the power supply unit. You don't usually get this with power supplies. You have to generally purchase this sort of thing separately, but it's perfect if you're struggling with solutions for your multiple USB devices. As mentioned, you'll find the USB ports usually in the bottom middle of the motherboard, and they should be clearly marked USB or FUSB, as you can see in this instance. Now, when you plug in the cable in, watch out because it has one pin missing on the connector and on the cable. So that's the way you work out which way round it goes. And then you can see from a couple of angles how that would plug in and basically slots in once you've finished your build and plugs into place down there. So that everything will work nicely. And that's the logic of that. So that's a nice additional thing to have there. But you have a couple of different options in terms of how to install it in the case, whether it's mounted directly to the power supply unit or put elsewhere in your build. Just know that if it is on the power supply unit, you don't need the SATA power cable connector as well. Now the SATA connectors are also used for SSDs and hard disk drives. And these are of different lengths, but they have multiple connectors on them. So you can connect multiple drives to one cable if you wish. So you'll see that you have one connector that plugs into the power supply unit and then multiple flat connectors that can plug into drives. You're looking for the SATA ports that you can see here, which are obviously six pin connectors, and there are several of them there, but you plug the cable in in the same way you have with the other cables, making sure it's firmly pushed in. The other end will then plug into your SSDs or hard disk drives. So the SSD end, you'll notice that there's an L-shaped connector to it, a little plastic notch on one part of the cable. So you can only plug the cable in one way, but that slots in there and you can connect up multiple drives easily. Then you have data cables, which should be included with your motherboard and they'll run from the drive. So you need one of these cables per drive, plugging into the drive and then plugging into the SATA ports on the bottom right of your motherboard. They're usually located in the same place and you should find multiples of those. So when you've got your drives installed into the cage or onto the plate 
as an example here, you can see this with the Corsair Air 5400. The drives were installed onto that, and then you plug the power cables into them. Now, with one SATA power cable, you can see I plug the SSD into one connector, then run the cable across and plug it into the hard disk drive as well. So both those things are powered, and then you run the data cables into the drives as well, and then run those through to the front of the case. Obviously, all of these things have to be nice and neat in your build, and if you've got a small case that's compact, then you'll want to minimize the amount of cables you're using. So using one SATA cable for these things can keep things nice and tidy, and then you just have to run the flat connectors for the data through to the front. So those will be included with your motherboard. They don't come with a power supply unit, but they plug in like that. Then you have the peripheral power cables. These are generally used for things like liquid coolant pumps for custom loop systems. I don't have something I can demonstrate that with, but you rarely need these in a the build unless you're doing something like that. So you probably won't find you need these anyway. What I'd recommend doing at this point is working out which cables you need and then plug in on all the connectors now, making sure they're all plugged in and ready to go in your build. Depending on the size of your case, this will make life easier for the installation and the running of the wires. But obviously you need to be aware of which way around the cables are going to go depending on how you're sorting things out. And you can use the little dust covers to block over the 24 pin power ports on the edge where you're not going to be plugging cables in so that they're protected and nothing can get in there. You can also use those plates that I showed you earlier in the video to cover over this side, for example, which would otherwise have the holes exposed and would be an issue there potentially. Now it's also worth noting you want to face the power supply into the case so that the fan is facing outwards so that it can pull cold air into it. So at this case, for example, being dual chamber, it will pull air from the back. And then you can see the mains power supply connector runs to the back there. Then when it comes to tidying the cables, there are various different things that are worth using. So we have these little plastic clips here which have magnets on them. And these are used for the eight pin CPU power cables, the flat cables. What you'll do is you'll mount those into the case with the magnets, but basically you're hooking the cables inside them. You can actually put three layers in there. So two cables, but you can fold one backwards onto it. You can see I'll put one on the shelf on the top there, and I've got another one further in. And you can put a few of these in, depending on whether your case is metal and the positions that are available to you. And then they can be slid up and down the cable, adjusted into place and used to tidy things up. These are nice because they're an alternative to using plastic cable ties. They're a little bit tidier and obviously make it easier to reposition them according to what you need and to make sure things are temporarily set up there until you're happy with how it looks. Also, they just make life really easy in terms of getting those cables nice and flat. There are plastic cable ties included in the box as well, though, which you can use to tie the cables together to keep the cables nice and neat at the rear. You can see me using one of the plastic cable ties here to tie it to a mounting point in the case so that it can make the front of the cable look neat so that it's running through from the front to the back in line so it's not pulled in a random direction and ends up looking a bit messy at the front because it looks a bit awkward. Hopefully your cable tidying is better than mine and you end up with something neater than this but there's definitely lots of things to help you make it look tidy and by the end hopefully you'll end up with a nice clean looking build which makes the most of those nicely sleeved cables. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. Check out the links in the description to find out more.